This is humbling. This means so much to me. And I, I'm doing all of this to show you guys, never let anybody validate you or tell you who you are. At the end of the day, we're not going to look to superficial things like blue check marks, the number of followers you have to validate your goals, your dreams, and what you desire in life. Okay? So I want all you guys to take away from this is creating your own table. Okay? You ate in your own table. They said it couldn't be done. I'm not a rapper. I'm not a singer. Who would come? Who wants to watch you talk? Uh, you better let them know. You better let them know. Okay? So just thank you guys so much. I'm like, I'm blown away. My tea sippers have come to take over ATL. So it's about to be popping this weekend. This is day one. Tomorrow's day two. I have a lot of festivities planned because I feel like as influencers, celebrities, whatever you deem us as, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for y'all. And don't let them forget that. Don't let people get a bag and then look at you like you're beneath them. Okay? Because I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for y'all's support, y'all's love, y'all's encouragement. So this is my payback to y'all. I want y'all to have an experience. Okay, honey? This is an experience. We got a lot of good people in the house that are coming through, that are supporting. We got a lot of people that we're going to be interviewing. So this is going to be a fun day. And I'm just, once again, I'm humbled. I am humbled that you guys are here. You guys flew. I mean, we had people coming from the UK. Where are my UK brothers at? Well, I know that's right. My UK team. They up here. Hey, lovely We see y'all. They up here, lovely. Hold we on. see y'all. We love you, lovely T. Um, I just want to thank you. Thank you. I just want to thank you because you've been a prophet throughout the whole time. You've prophesied a lot of things that has come into fruition. So I just want to honor you. I just want to thank you. Actually, I want to thank your children for making the sacrifice um, and for sacrificing their mother. So I just want to thank you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you, and, and oh not only just that. I'm not going to cry, because this makeup took a while, okay? You have legs and hips and body, body. <laughs> Addy, Addy, Addy. Give me that back. Give me that back. Give I look that very back. different from behind my desk, okay? Yeah. Okay? So I'm glad yeah. I can finally see all of me. <laughs> Yo, go ahead, brother. So thank you, guys. We're going to go ahead and get started with the show. But once again, from the bottom of my heart, y'all mean the most to me, and I love you guys, because y'all didn't have to be here. I love y'all. Know that. 
So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much. I see a lot of my Discorders, honey. I see y'all. <laughs> Do y'all love this space? Yeah. I told you it was not going to be nobody's smoky basement. Okay? It was gonna, I was going to spend money and make it nice for y'all. I want y'all to have a comfortable experience and to walk away with just a wealth of information and to show you guys other sides of people that I'm going to bring out here. So I'm super excited for y'all to be here. So we are waiting for the next guest. He will be out here shortly. Got my tea cup. You got your tea cup ready? I know that's right. <laughs> Okay, all right. And I'm glad y'all got the workbooks. We worked on that. Those workbooks are to help y'all. Y'all can take notes. There'll be a wealth of information, things that will edify y'all. So feel free to write up in the workbooks. You know what I'm saying? Decide who's going to be in your inner circle, who's going to be an associate. So it's a lot of things in that workbook to help you build your brand and build your self-confidence. So definitely take advantage of that. The QR codes are in there as well. And we'll be filling those up with pictures and information as time goes on. Yes. So definitely enjoy the workbooks. <laughs> okay, so bringing on my first guest. You guys may know her from Love and Hip Hop. Her name is Miss Mimi Fast. Come on out, Miss Mimi. <laughs> Come on out, sis. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, y'all can do better than that. Give it up one more time for Mimi. Give it up for her. <laughs> so, Miss Mimi is here to sip some tea with us. Yes, ma'am. First of all, you look gorgeous, okay? You are out here looking like you're in your 20s. Let them know life does not stop after 30, ladies. Don't let anybody tell you once you hit a certain age, you should just roll over and die. That is not the case. Or 40 or 50. Thank you. Thank you, because you look gorgeous. So thank you for coming. We watched you recently on the Love and Hip Hop Family Reunion show. Yes. And I really enjoyed it. It was just a vibe. And you seemed like you were in such a, you know, a more happier space. Yes. How did you feel doing that? Because that's different from the traditional Love and Hip Hop with the drama and the fights and all that mess. It was a much better space. I enjoyed every second of it. Um, it was completely different from filming Love in Hip Hop. So I didn't know what to expect, but after I got there, when I got there, I saw the, the cast and I'm like, oh God, this is gonna be interesting. Mm -hmm. But everybody, you know, sometimes we got along, sometimes we didn't, but we worked through it. Mm -hmm. That's what I can say. We worked through it. And I was kind of like the mediator. I don't know you how are. that happened, but I'm like... Yeah, because usually you're the one ready to turn up. I'm like, Mimi has calmed down so much. I have. I've grown up. Yes. You know? And people were coming to me, mm -hmm. like, telling me their problems. Like, what should I do? Trying to get advice. I'm like, how does this happen? <laughs> this is crazy. But, you know, it was great. And, mm -hmm. you know, it was great. I loved it. Good. Like, I enjoyed it. Like I said, it was something different than the typical. So now I know you have a very close relationship with your beautiful daughter, Eva. Yes. And how old is Eva now? She is 12 years old. She'll be 13 in December. Can y'all believe Time this? Time flies. Y'all remember on Living Hip Hop, she was a little baby. Time flies. Oh, my God. And I know, like, you know, you went through a lot growing up. Yes. And I remember me and you talked before. Um, your family was one of the first black families in Scientology. Yes. And if you guys don't know Mimi's backstory, she went through a lot as a teenager. And so for her to be standing where she's at today is a testimony. My mother abandoned me for Scientology when I was 13 years old. The church sent people up to escort me out of the building, a 13 year old. They didn't give me one red cent or a blanket. I was homeless. My mother did not utter one word. Our job as parents is that we take a stand against those people that hurt our children. You know, because we all go through things in life. So what are some of the things that, in the hardships that you went through as a child, that you're instilling Eva so that way she doesn't have to go down those same hardships? Uh, um, every day we talk about when she leaves the house making good choices. Mm -hmm. 
that is one thing. I never had like a, an adult or a parental figure talk to me about things like that. When I went outside, I just had to go out there and if I, if I fell and bumped my head and I had to figure it out, you know, if I made a bad decision or did something wrong, it was like, oh, that's wasn't it. Let me try this again. But I teach her, you got to make good choices yeah. because your choices have consequences. Mm -hmm. So if you go out there and you do something and it's a bad choice, that has a consequence that you're going to have to deal with. Right. So we, we talk a lot about that. Um, I teach her all of this stuff that I didn't get. I try to give her, drop all the jewels on my daughter because I want her to be great. Right. You know, I had Eva later in life. I didn't have Eva till I was 38 years old. Mm. So I need to give her everything because I'm not going to always be here. Right. And I need her to be fully prepared and equipped mm -hmm. when she gets out in that world to, to just you know, know what it is and be prepared to deal with whatever comes her way. Right. I didn't. I wasn't. Yeah. Child, I messed up so many times. Lord. <laughs> but it's about, you know, oh. making mistakes and learning from them. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Nobody's perfect. You know, so as far as, you know, you were in a relationship with Ty. Yes. And like I told you before, I felt like that relationship was a lot happier. Are you guys in a better space now? Because I know there were some things that kind of went on, you know, a few months ago on social media. So where are you guys at with that now? Let's talk about social media for a second. Let's go, sis. That's why we're here. Social media will put the two on the 10. If y'all don't know what that means, that means they will blow it out of proportion so quick and so fast. Mm -hmm. And if you are a diehard social media person, you're going to believe it. Oh, yep. they said that on Hollywood Unlocked. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, the shade room said it. That Not so much. You cannot believe everything you read. You cannot believe everything you hear. Sometimes you can't even believe everything you see until you get the full story. Facts. So, you know, the social media games, you know, I get it. It's, it's the way of the world now. And, and things get blown out of proportion on social media. But Ty and I, we're in a great space. Good. We are uh, working on our friendship. We're trying to get back to that. I've been with Ty seven years. It's a long time. Right. And I'm not going to let some social media or whatever was going on just... You can't just destroy what you guys build. Yeah, right. It's, it's, it's impossible. If the if the love wasn't there, yes, mm -hmm. but it was on both our parts. Good, so. good. And that's the thing. And that's one thing about my brand and my fans is tea sippers. Like I always tell you guys, it's about integrity. Just because a story is viral on places like the Shade Room or whatever website, you always want to do your due diligence. So sometimes. I'm not going to jump on something right away. I want to research, get the facts, and figure out what is going on. Why is that not like that anymore? Because when we were growing up, you couldn't just put out anything. And now you could just make up a story. I could be like, you're pregnant today by, you know, you about to, with, with Stevie J. Y'all not even messing around. But because I'm saying it, everybody will run, run with, with it. It. Yes. it will run with legs. Like, why do you think that is that it's more about going viral and trying to get clicks and views and integrity? That's just the way of the world now. Mm -hmm. It sucks, but that's what it is, mm -hmm. you know? And I just feel bad for our younger generation because they're growing up believing this type of stuff. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. um, we're a little older, so we know. Let's get the facts first. Right. Our young people, they be like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the <laughs> truth. You know what I'm saying? That's, I, I just scrolled and read. Saw it. That's, yeah, mm -hmm. Come on, man. Right. It's not so much. So now, with your daughter getting ready to be a teenager, yes, and we have a lot of, you know, just imagery on Instagram, right? Yes. As we scroll, we see what I tell people, what is a highlight reel? Yes. Because nobody posts on Instagram when they're sick, that when part. they're depressed, when they look a hot mess. Unless they so, want attention. Exactly. You know, oh, I'm sick. <sighs> If you know, you, taking if you, selfies if you really and stuff. that sick, you're not taking selfies. You're not. You're not making videos, and you're not posting it on, on social media. You're not. When I'm sick, I fuck my phone, my bad. Right. When I'm sick, my phone is, I don't care about none, none of that. Exactly. So, yeah, come on. So now, what are you teaching her about as far as self-esteem and comparing herself? Because some of y'all 13-year-olds on the gram don't look 13. Some of y'all look to be by my age, and I'm a grown woman. I'm like, I see 13s with like just whole faces of makeup, makeup the weave, the yes. nails. And it's like, it's okay to be a kid. It's okay to be a kid. I don't even see little girls anymore with barrettes and bows and none of that. L lace fronts at nine. And I'm not knocking it, but it's okay to be a kid. Because it's not fun adulting. Y'all got to pay bills and stuff. Listen. Okay. 
I tell Eva this all the time. Mm -hmm. I said, don't rush to be a grown up. Enjoy these kid years because you can never get these years back. Amen. Once you hit a adulthood, that's it. You're an adult for the rest of your life. So you rushing to be grown. I want to do this and do that. Uh-uh. Slow down. Mm -hmm. Enjoy this time. Because when it's gone, it's gone. Yeah. And I tell her all the time, bill day is the sixth of every month. Mm -hmm. And I'm, on, I'm sitting at the table with a stack of bills. She come in. Mommy, what you doing? I said, you see this? This is what grown-ups do. Yeah. You want to be grown? You want to sit up here and pay these bills? Every six of the month. <laughs> no matter what's coming in, you, these bills do not stop. Like, I, mm -hmm. I tell her, they're yeah. real. I, go outside and kick some rocks or throw a ball, do, <laughs> jump some rope, because you can't, you're not going to be able to do that when you get grown. Yeah, you you're know? not. And, and that's the thing, too, is that we have to teach them young, yeah. you know, about finances. Money doesn't grow on trees. And sometimes when you're the child of a celebrity or an influencer, they seem to think that your money is their money. Uh, no, sir. No, ma'am. Listen. Mm. I'm looking at y'all, too. They're my boys Listen. right there. Them, too. No, Look, no they got sir. their head down. Them, too. They're my boys. <laughs> I asked my daughter one day. We was picked her up from school. I'm like, you want a snack? She was like, yeah. I said, what you want? My daughter said, Benny Hanna's. Oh. Ma'am, ma'am, <laughs> Subway is a snack. Okay, Benny Hanna's, that's like. That's date night. That's date night or, or a birthday or something. Like, what do you. Yeah. So I had to reel her back in and say, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> snack is chips in the sandwich. Thank you, and an apple. You know, <laughs> that part. So yeah, I gotta. She, I, I really try to keep Eva balanced because mm -hmm. her dad's on TV, her dad is in the music business. I've been on television as, as long as she's known. Mm -hmm. So she thinks that's what it is. And I'm like, no, ma'am. Mm -hmm. This is not everybody's life. Right. This life that you and, and your, your dad have, mm -hmm. everybody doesn't get this. Everybody doesn't get a chance to do this. Honestly, this, this fell in my lap. Yeah. This fell in. I never aspired to be on TV. I never wanted to be on television. I never, it wasn't a dream, a goal, an aspiration of mine. Mm -hmm. This literally fell in my lap. I had an argument with Stevie in the lobby of a hotel, and the Love & Hip Hop producer saw us. Wow. And we got chose just like that. Unintentional. Mm -hmm. I was having a for real moment. Mm. It pissed me off. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how it happened. Right. So, I was cleaning houses before that. Mm -hmm. I had a cleaning business. So the way my life just changed dramatically, I always try to keep my daughter grounded. Because guess what? I could always go back to that. Right, right. My life could also change in the opposite way. And I'm like, oh, God. But I always have that to go back to. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not naming names, but people just tease me. Oh, hey, maid, you a maid, you a... Right. Pause. <laughs> I own my own business. You better let them know. I was a business owner yep. years ago. Mm -hmm. So you calling me a maid, and I'm looking like, you're not insulting me. Right. By calling me a maid, dodo bird. <laughs> it's not an insult, but. You know. Right, right. You know, and that's the thing. It's like, we have to have people. Everybody can't be a business owner. Everybody, you know, some people don't want that aspiration. It's a lot of work. And it's okay if you're the fry cook at Bojangles. It's still a job. It's a job. You're still working. You're still trying to take care of your family. That's why I said never let anybody belittle you and make you feel less than. As long as you're doing the right thing and you're treating people right, that's what matters. It's about character. Because I know a lot of people with blue check marks and money, and they lack character. Woo! Okay, let's talk say, about it. Say it again for the people in the back. We know a lot of people with blue check marks right. and money, and they lack character, okay? So, I mean, that's, that's just the truth of the matter, and that's why I want to bring people on here like Mimi, so y'all can see a different side of her, because I don't want y'all to get the misconception that what you see on Love & Hip Hop or see in the shade room is just all she is. She's multifaceted. She's a mother. She's a business owner. You know, she's just very down to earth. You know, we've, we've talked before, and you've just always been so humble, and I really want to thank you. for. She came out last minute and was like, T's in town, I'm coming. So definitely get up for Mimi. And one thing I've noticed on social media is that there's definitely a divide between men and women, especially black men and black women. Um, there's a lot of drama. And if you live on Instagram, if you live on Twitter, 
you would think that there's no such thing as black love or even people being together and being happy because all we're seeing is just chaos and drama. We have all the mess that popped off with Monique and DL and a bunch of other stuff. So we're going to talk about it. So I want to know how you feel, start with you, Mimi, about just a lot of the divide you see on social media with men versus women, black women versus black men and things like that. I think it's horrible. I want to start there. Um, I'm not sure how Monique and Dio Hughley got to the state of, oh my God, where they are right now. Um, however, here we are, and it just keeps going and going. And I understand someone says something about you or your family, you want to rebuttal that. I get it. But like, where do you draw the line? Right. Where do you say, that was a low blow. Where do you, enough is enough. Like, where is it in you where you like, okay, bringing up the kids and their situations, very personal situations, was too much. Wow. Like, at some point, you got to check yourself and say, yes, I am a comedian. Yes, I am, I'm going, but that is not okay. Right. And a lot Going of back to the integrity. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, yeah. the fans, they love mm -hmm. it. They love the drama. Yeah. They love it. They mm -hmm. like, ah, they... Yeah, they feel they live for? it. I really, I, off subject, but we're going to jump right back. Mm -hmm. I had someone say um, that she watched Jocelyn's show because of the drama. She was like, I don't want to see nobody happy. Mm. I don't want to see nobody doing good. I was like, oh. Mm. I said, well, you will certainly won't be watching my new show. <laughs> right. Right. My new show is all about happy and doing good. <laughs> One viewer check won't be there. Okay. Mm -hmm. No problem. But however, you got to draw the line somewhere, guys. You know, we're, we're, we're all human. We all have feelings. We all, you know, check this out. Back in the day, if you like Michael Jackson, you couldn't jump on your phone and say, I don't like your nose or why you... D you had mm -hmm. to write this man a letter, put a stamp on it, and write an address and yep. send it to his fan mail. Mm -hmm. You couldn't, you, it's too much access. Yeah. It's too much. Yeah. And because it's too much access, people feel like they can say whatever, mm -hmm. do whatever, with no with consequences. No consequences. With yeah. No consequences. None. All right, yeah. I'm, tired. I'm done. Tired. All right. Rona, you want to speak about this? Because I know you're, you know, you see this a lot coming from like the black male collective on social media. What I'll say is uh, there's, a lack, there's a lack of conflict resolution. And uh, there are individuals who like to have a roommate instead of actually a relationship. And when it comes to relationships, you got to vet not just that person, but yourself. Mm -hmm. And there's too many people who's looking for a villain rather than someone to help them heal them. And you got too many people who are broken, and that's why our communities are nothing but ethnic outposts now. Mm -hmm. So... Now you got guys talking about these women are this, these women are that. Right. And you got women saying men are trash, but they haven't healed themselves. Mm -hmm. So now we just got an internet infirmary where people are out here playing accountability dodgeball. Right. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to take accountability for why they're in their situation. They want to project onto everybody else. But like I've always said, it doesn't really affect us as adults. For the most part, we know who we are. It's the next generation coming up. Oh, there's another thing is too. Um, people need to know the difference between a lifestyle and a lifestyle. Talk about it. Say it again. Say it again for the people in the <laughs> back. Please, okay. louder. When it comes to a lifestyle, this is on camera and off camera, without your makeup, without all that exterior bullshit. When you're living a lifestyle, you can have a billion roommates and none of y'all can afford the rent. But nobody would know. Yeah. Because they think right. all y'all balling. Mm -hmm. But see, the, everybody they, acting yeah. like they balling. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think it's like people who run around with blue checks, they do that so they won't be checked. Mm. Talk Ooh, about sad. it. Like I said, I may not have a blue check, but guess what? I get checks. That's right. Okay? <laughs> so don't get it twisted. Yeah. Okay? 
So, yeah. Lady J, go ahead and speak. What do you think about the things going on on social Girl, media? You know, can y'all hear me? Can y'all hear me? <laughs> Mimi, every time I get on a podcast with T, my headphones is always messed up. <laughs> but honestly, I would have to say that I look at it from a more cultural standpoint. And what's upsetting to me is that I think black men use, or people of color, men of color, happen to use the white male trope of uh, superiority and hegemon and apply it to black women. And it does not work for us. You know what I'm saying? It was never meant to work for us. And I think instead of us having this conversation consistently, which is great to have, right? Because we need to get the conversation started and move it forward. But I think that for me, I look at us as all tribal. And I think that we try to put ourselves under one umbrella as people of color when we really fit into all of these different categories. And we need to understand that and then pull out from that and then work from there. But first thing is first, accountability to ourself. Mm -hmm. I'm not finna sit here and worry about what nobody else is doing per se, even though I do like the drama, I'm petty too, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a lady 22 hours a day, but two of them I reserve for petty, <laughs> okay? And I have petty points that I have kept and they're accruing. Just two, just, just two. two, I'm a lady. Just two. Lady J. <laughs> right. but, I mean, just in, in, in jest, I'm being, you know, but really to be honest with you, it's like, to me, I ask myself questions every day. Am I treating people with respect? Am I approaching people the way I want to be approached? Am I, as a mother, representing myself to my daughter and to my son the best way? You know, all of these things. And if I find that I'm not doing something right, I have no right to sit back and criticize. Mm. None. None. Right. So that's my two cents. Okay. <laughs> All right, Lady J. Thank you for that. Yes. All right. Shanet and Art, if y'all want to go ahead and say y'all's piece. Yes. Um, are we going to say, am I on? Can you hear me? Are we, are we going to say ladies first, uh, people in the house, for the wife? <laughs> yeah. I'm just so thankful for you, honey. Oh. <laughs> black love. So y'all so do know that black it, love exists. It does exist. It definitely exists. Mm -hmm. And we as black women have to stop putting our men down because we're talking about, oh, I'm independent. No, that was a setup. That was a setup. And a lot of us don't even realize that it was a setup for us in the black community to keep us at a certain level and not to rise any higher than our other counterparts and keep us divided. I, I appreciate you for that, honey. And um, I, I wanted to touch on something uh, Sister Mimi said here a minute ago. She talked about so much access. Um, and, you know, in show business, they used to have something called, what, a five-minute delay? When they were talking about, uh, you know, profanity or maybe something that would go on. I, I mean, the slap. That's a big thing, you know. Yeah. Yes. But that delay was able to give a control mechanism because we know that everything ain't for everybody. Right. You know, and what social media has done, what technology has done, it is removed that cover and it removes that safety mechanism so that people are expressing their views and they're participating, but they're not understanding that the filter being ripped out of place is opening them up for exploitation. Mm. You see, so, so we have to be aware that there's a very clever design and this is something that we know how to do well. It's just a matter of being informed. It's like, you know, when you grow up in the house with your siblings, you got your people and your folks and everything, you know, y'all can fight all day long. But when you get a visitor to come over, they can't fight your people. Right. Say, we may have a problem, but that ain't for you. Right. You know? right. So uh, when we see Monique and we see D.L. Hewley and, and, and matters like that, we just can't lose that element of our culture. You know, um, we, can, we can entertain. You know, we can enjoy the pettiness. We can, we can do some of that, but there is a line, and we have to all understand that that's an imperative because there is a very clever design at work. So as long as we're mindful of that, then we can participate intelligently. Uh, but the thing is, when you look at the problem between a uh, black man and black woman and the unity issues, this is an extremely multi layered 400 year old dynamic mm -hmm. that's dealing with fragmented souls, all types of fragmentation, 
disunity, all types of trauma-based bonding, things that have happened to us that have yet to be addressed. Yes. So when we're, when we're thinking of solving the problem, when we're thinking of addressing the problem, there has to be a very strategically mounted approach. And uh, sometimes when you open up certain doors, you know how you clean up your house, everything is really nice, and then somebody comes in, they say, no, don't open that closet door, because that's going to show <laughs> that's everything a very good analogy. that has been dealt with. Yes. And, and when we address one another on a forum like social media, where the filters have not been in place, and there's nobody mediating, we got a whole bunch of closet doors popping open and a whole bunch of stuff coming okay. out. Well, thank you, Art. We appreciate you. So I'm glad we're able to get that discussed because, again, one thing with my platform is I don't like division. I don't like divisiveness. Like I always tell people, my platform is for everybody, black, white, male, female. We can have opinions. We don't have to agree on everything. We can always go back to the old days of where we used to agree to disagree. To disagree. Like, now yeah. you can't, if you don't like Britney Spears, oh, you better not even look my way. <laughs> you know, like we, it right. doesn't make sense. That's the point of us being individuals. You like what you like, I, I like, like what it. I like, but I don't have to knock you because of what you like. Right. So, you know, just ending that divisiveness. And I think, you know, a lot of this is being exacerbated because of social media. You know, these clicks and, you know, team this and team that, you know, nobody else can make you happy. You need to be team yourself first. first right. Even when you're on an airplane, we're all traveling here. What did they tell y'all? Before you take off your flotation device and try and help your neighbor. Help yourself. Ain't it, ain't put it, your mask it. on first. Yeah. So you have to put yourself first before you can give that type of edification or love or empathy to anybody else. So we just want y'all to just really walk away being edified and just walking away with more than what y'all came in. So that's why we're here doing this. And yeah, I, yeah, I yo, yo, yo. You want to say what I appreciate else? you. Microphone. <laughs> <laughs> check, check, check. Thank you. Yes, got you. Um, just like what T said, it's like uh, there's three things you should come away with. The reason you're seeing everything you're just seeing is there's a lot of people who are emotionally homeless. There's too, many, there's too many people on the net doing these bum fights, um, looking for validation, prostituting their purpose and their, t and their presence. Sir. Very powerful. powerful. Who is this, Aesop Fable? <laughs> is he Aesop Fable? <laughs> Go Wait, on, Ronnie, I need you, can you say that now, one more time? Who are you, sir? Prostituting their purpose. Okay, there's, a, there's too many people who are prostituting their purpose and their presence. The second thing is, with the guys, stop reducing yourself from being a simp. And I define it as being a spiritually impaired mule of provision. Mm. And stop being, stop be looking for another mother to sleep with. Oh, yes. mm. Thank you. We're tired. Because you can't raise yeah. We're tired. <laughs> He's already grown. What you going to do? <laughs> now, for the do? ladies, <laughs> there's no benefit in being a beautiful bum. Mm. <laughs> Who is this guy? So, you speak Who is on he? It. <laughs> so, what I'm saying is like, it's more than how you look. It's how you view yourself in the mirror when you have all those filters off, how you move, how you carry yourself. Facts. That way, when he sees you, he will appreciate you. Mm -hmm. And the last thing is like, if you want to see an example of black love, look at your ticket. Because the fact that they're eating processed food where someone has their own table. Ooh, you, is that mm. processed food? You better say some. Giving you something <laughs> of substance, giving you an unbiased and open opinions. Teaching you how to think, not what to think, not how to think, but now to view yourself. Ladies and Sir. gentlemen, y'all give Ronan a, 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 the bars. I mean, please. Just the bars. AKA what? Aesop's Fable. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, sure man. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Okay. So, yeah, just y'all yeah. being here, it's an honor and a pleasure to see the evolution of T, see Mimi and everybody here. Because that's why being your genuine self is a benefit. So now, I can't deal with him. we want to take some questions from the audience. Yes. So, Aaron, you got the microphone? Yes, I do. 
And Marquis. I got the mic. I got the mic. So hands up if I have I a question. Hi, I'm Jania. So my question. Hi, Jania. My question was like, with the discussion with the war with black men and women on the internet. So the first step we took was like having the discussion and stuff and starting the conversation. So what would be the like the next best progressive and like productive step to take after the conversation? Do you think? We can't hear. You. Keep the mic to your mouth. Oh, you didn't hear the question. So you said what it. was the what? The next like best and productive step to take after the conversation, like starting the conversation about the war between black men and women on the internet. So. Well, I think one of the steps that you have to take, again, like I always tell you guys, it starts with personal responsibility. You can't, because you can't control anybody else, right? I can't control what you do outside of here and you can't control what I do. So when people complain about the folks who are tearing each other down on social media or tearing down black women or black men, you have to ask yourself, why are you giving your, your energy to that, right? So it all starts with self. When you stop giving your energy to certain people, and especially if when you get done watching them or you know, listening to them, it makes you feel away, it makes you feel angry, it makes you feel sad, it makes you question who you are and your worth, then again, you're being a glutton for pain. Because why do you keep going back to somebody who's telling you that you're not good enough, you're not pretty enough, you'll never amount to anything, you're not spicy, you know what I'm saying? So at, at what point do we take personal responsibility and say there's certain people I'm not going to entertain? You know, so that's where it starts. And then I would say the second half is treating folks how you want to be treated. Yep. Oh. Okay? People forget All day, that. every day. It goes back to basics. If you want to be treated well, you treat others well. Right. So that's the thing. If you're walking around angry and bitter with a chip on your shoulder and mad at the world, that is the energy that you're going to attract. Mm -hmm. So this is how we utilize what we're saying in the real world. Mm -hmm. So I hope that answered your question, sis. Okay, we have another Definitely. One. Testing. Oh, Marianelle. Oh, thank you. We got another question. She's bringing yes, it up. Yes, we do. I'm sorry. Hey, lovely T is young Kobe from Jersey. All right, All right Jersey in the house. Thank you for coming um, through. I appreciate y'all. Um, for the past two years, I've been able to see things in a different light. I've been able to see like the divisiveness in like 2020 vision. Um, with you guys seeing, uh, being on, being able to see like celebrities in a bigger scale, um, I, I see hip hop as like very, very impressionable on young kids. And I, I'm, it, you know, when you brought up the subject of the division between black male and women, you know, each time I hear a new song, I'd be like, damn, we was headed here and then we back down here. So it's yes. like, so what do we do as a, as a community? Like, do we change our music we listen to? Because, you know, at the forefront, the music that we want to hear or that's uplifting is not, you know. So what do we do? Like, what you know, because obviously, you know, I, I like that petty stuff too sometimes. You know, <laughs> right, I can't, right, right, can't right. lie. You know, that's, that's what gets us going and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I believe that, you know, music is, is a different frequency that, you know, gets to us. Mm -hmm. And, and it, mm -hmm. it tells us to do certain things unconsciously. We may not know it, but... I just want to know what do we do, you know, when we, we look at our, our celebs. I try not to, you know, look at celebs as our uh, people that we're going to well follow models. and stuff, but right. what do we do as a community? Okay, let's let Mimi answer that. Real quick, mm -hmm. um, I'm going to touch on that because my daughter's father is a music producer, and I've been around the music game for many, many years. And the issue with the music game is, you can write whatever song you want, as positive as you want. But once you get that song to the executives and it gets to the, the labels, they make the decision on whether that positive song is good to sell or not. And if they determine your positivity ain't good to sell and they want some BS, they're, they're going to shelf your shit. Mm -hmm. They want the bitch, da-da-da, you ain't da-da-da, they... If that's what they want, if that's what they think that sells, that's what they're going to promote, which is terrible. And we don't have any, us as black people have no control over that. It's these billion dollar corporations and record labels that control the music that's put out. Mm -hmm. So we can make all the positive songs we want. Unless you got an independent situation, it's not going to get heard. Yeah, the rock it's, it's, starts at the true. top. Yeah. We're talking about 
record executives who are selling, okay? But if we're having uh, 500,000 households in the United States that are unified, front, man and woman, okay, well, well, we're only participating in that which is of our best interests. So all of a sudden, the music is not selling anymore. So what do, you, part, what do you think the billionaire part, is going to do now? Follow suit. Follow suit. You follow what I'm saying? So our role Start as men us. is mm -hmm. absolutely yeah, That's so true. And if we understand that, we can begin to implement the change and make the billionaires make the decisions that we determine are for our best. But it starts mm -hmm. with us. Yes. It starts it at start, home. If we don't accept the BS anymore, we have to collectively. And this is one thing about us as a community, we don't stick together. Yeah. We got it. Everybody out for self. Everybody's out for self. We got to start sticking together. Let me tell y'all something. Mm -hmm. On reality TV, I've been doing this 10 years. I would get with my castmates. We'd be like, we're going to do this. We're going to say this. We're going to, we going to, yeah. Soon as them cameras roll, everybody like, hey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> When I switch say they up. switch up quick, and I'm like, wait a minute, what happened? We just we and just we have about seen this. the switch ups. We just said we was gonna do X, Y, and Z, and as soon as the cameras roll, yeah. everybody out for self. I'm picking my job off the floor. Right. <laughs> yeah. I thought we was. So I said, oh, okay. So because I remember you told me a long time ago that when you would watch the reunions, it was very traumatic for you. Yes. Because you guys don't understand, they're taping all of this in advance. So the whole time you're thinking you're cool with somebody or even if there was conflict, you're thinking it's water under a bridge. And now you're reliving it and you're seeing it once it's edited. And then they tell you, now you got to come to the reunion show in a few months. The So that's why those reunion shows are now a big part of reality television because that's when you can get out all your grievances from what you watched over the past season. So it's by design. It's by mm -hmm. design. It's mm -hmm. by design. That's we got to learn how to stick together. Y'all, just everybody in this audience, go back, tell your friends, your family, cousins, your aunties, your uncles, your kids, your, everybody. We have to stick together. That's the only way we're going to make a change with anything that we want to do. As long as we're divided, man, woman, whatever the case may be, it's never going to work. And y'all know this division has started, like he said, Hundreds of years ago, when they took the black man out of the family, they would rape the black man in front of the women and the kids just to fuck us up, just to no, demasculate the man. Come on, y'all. We got to We got to do some research. Yes. Slavery and, was and, and the and we have letter never in the making healed of the slave. From this day, right. we haven't healed from this. Never. And the thing, my friend did a, a paper in her for master's pro, um, program, and she titled it Post Traumatic Slave Disorder. Mm. Dr. Joyce DeGroy? Mm -hmm. Well, she, she copied off of oh, some of that. Yeah. She built from that. That's a powerful And system. when I heard that phrase for the first time when I was in college, it hit me because I was like, damn, what post-traumatic slave disorder? And then when I started doing you know, my study and looking to the elements of what disorder is and what trauma is and thinking that I grew up thinking black people were all okay, that we didn't need you know, medicine and therapy mm -hmm. and things therapy. like that. And the only thing I think that's good come good out of mm -hmm. Corona is the conversation on mental health because the reality is when we talk about the accountability piece and I'll say this really quickly when you talk about and you make a good point from a black male perspective this is what it is but the reality is brothers some of y'all brothers ain't together. The dusty, the, the dude who d prefers to just do nothing basic, basic, basic. Girls too, ladies too. But mm -hmm. like you said, we don't want to have to build you up. Black women are always building mm -hmm. people up. We the baseline for the politics. We tied. We tied. <laughs> Amen. We got another question for you, awesome, amazing people. This okay. question comes from the furthest away. All who's right. the furthest away from? Who's the furthest away? Raise your hand. Where are you from? Where are you from? London. London, London Bridge is going down, baby. London, London Bridge fellas. is going down. Young man, please make this Team a quick UK. question. Introduce yourself and tell the people who you are. Hi there. My name is Jonathan from London. London. All right. So, um, this is kind of like a question, but... Does everyone remember Black Planet? Black who? Black Planet. 
Black Planet. Black Planet. Yes. Black Planet. Okay, yes, Black Planet. Yeah, I remember yep. Black Planet, remember? yeah. So do you remember when, um, back in the days, like, Black Planet used to be a place where it was fun, you know, everyone would crack jokes. Facts. There was healthy dialogues um, in the chat rooms. Mm. Whereas when you look at social media today, you look at IG, um, you look at the shade room, you just see the division, the arguing, and a lot of the times when I'm on IG, sometimes I just have to close my phone because yes. it's just like, this is too toxic. Like seeing mm -hmm. black men and black women just go at it. It's just like, how can we create healthy forums where we can have like the necessary conversations or dialogues? Great question. Well, well, the good thing is that we're starting here. Ain't that so right? So again, we're able to do that here Ain't because that right. I'm creating give Lady my T own a hand. table. Ain't that right? Whereas if I would have asked one of these corporations to do this for me, these topics wouldn't even be had. Right. So again, it's about creating your own That's space right. where you guys can have these real conversations because they're needed. Because I see broken people on both sides. I get the emails. I get the DMs. You know, and it's like there's a lot of people who are hurt by the things that they see. And that's one thing with social media is that it gives you the anonymity to say whatever you want and to be wh whoever you want to be. Because a lot of the people who got the most mouth, we don't know what they look like. Right. You know, all of them swear they look like Beyonce and got hazel eyes and long hair. We don't know that. You have an avatar. Right. You know, so it's like, so that's one thing to not even take anything, any person that does not show their face, what they look like. If they're not strong enough to come on camera right. and, you know, show you who they are so that way you can pick them apart the same way they pick you apart, I pay trolls no mind. Have fun. Right. Woo! So this is, this is how we started by creating things like this to have these conversations. Well, to add to that, uh, some people who have the most to say, a lot of them not camera friendly in the first place. Oh, so that part. We'll leave that. Ah, but <laughs> <laughs> if you want to address the situation right there, we had to cut our addiction to fear and fail porn. Mm. Say Every it again? I said we had to cut our addiction to fear and fail porn. Mm. Every time we get out here, we look on some validation in a negative way. I'm not good enough. I'm not this. I'm not tall enough. I don't have this. And there's so many people who make money in rendering you socially sterile. Mm. Now, you're sitting there losing time, valuing yourself. That's why we address the things that say with mental health. There's people that I know who are no longer here because they bought into the nonsense. Right, right, exactly. But when you have platforms like this where you can dress things head on, Facts. you will have the courage to no longer be a prisoner of perspective. And you can face yourself. That part, that okay. part. Amen. Well said. Yes. Some Speaking of affirmations, Lovely T does have some affirmations out there on a merch table. So mm -hmm. make sure you get your merchandise. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It's all Sweet about positive, it. you know, see intentions what I and affirmations <laughs> for yourself. <laughs> Definitely. So on that note, this was a good roundtable discussion. Thank you guys so much for the questions and for participating. We really appreciate it. Yes. All right. Give it up to the peoples. Good night. <laughs> Can I say one last thing? Uh -huh. I, I, I've had this on my mind. Uh, the work that you're doing, Lovely T, this work is very sacred. There was, there was a point in time when I said, okay, yeah, well, she does celebrity gossip. But I guess maybe I catch it. It was no big thing. You know, but as it began to dawn on me, you, know, uh, you said something to me. You said, I give them the medicine and I mix it in. You know, so that they, and, the food. and this is a very pow powerful work. This is a very necessary work. And mm -hmm. you're giving us Ida B. Wells energy. Ida, oh, wow. good analogy, very, Ida. good analogy. Very necessary mm -hmm. things in our community that need to have a voice. And this sister is bringing it to our attention. And her, her, her writing is her speech and her method. That's how she writes into our consciousness. So y'all give our sister a hand and she's, and she's doing it from an independent platform. Thank you guys. An independent platform. Thank you guys. So Thank you. brothers, we got to have this sister's back. <laughs> we got to look out for her. Thank you guys. We, we, Thank we, 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 we got her back. We need Thank our sister. You. So Thank that you. was on my right. mind to say yes. very important. And you all, thank you so much for your support. You keep on, you continue. Because <laughs> it's needed. Definitely.
Thank you guys so much. All right. Thank you. This means if you want the latest news in the streets, join us sentiment for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely tea TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely tea TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.